Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Lenten Response and Prayer 2 service. And uh, this week we will be looking at Mary, the Mother of God, and uh, her role as a related follower of the cross, and uh, looking at how our own relatives and friends and what have you might affect our own spiritual lives and uh, what what relationships in life are the most important and so that's going to be what the theme is for this week um, it's not a whole lot of extra things going on just a reminder that uh, we'll be having our uh, voters meeting uh, after church this coming Sunday, and uh, yeah, if anybody wants to look at the uh, the text of the Constitution, there's copies out in the narthex for that purpose. And otherwise, uh, we don't have a lot of extra stuff going on at the immediate moment. So anyway, we will. Uh, Rise as we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my, and my mouth will declare your praise. praise. Make haste to God to deliver me. Make haste, Make haste to help me, O Lord. Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts, my soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, and she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. The scripture reading is... Uh, from John chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother Sisti, Mary, sister, Mary the mother, wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalena. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple, whom he loved, standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Together we sing the office hymn today, Your Mercy Calls Us. Please be seated.
continue with the Kyrie. O Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. O Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Our Father, who have art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're talking about Mary, the mother of God, the related follower in our Followers of the Cross series. How many Christians are members of the church because they are related to other Christians? Most of us were baptized as infants because our parents brought us to the font to give us the gift of Christian faith. Some of us have married active Christians who in turn brought us to church. However, it happened, relationships matter. Of course, it has worked the other way around. A person marries a spouse who leads him or her away from church. Children grow up and reject the idea that family ties or some authority should tell them how to think. On TikTok, the communist Chinese social media platform, some LGBTQ activists have targeted children, trying to groom them and sever them from their real families. We encounter people who are Christian by proxy. They aren't very religious, but they rely on Granny's faith, for example, even after she's gone. Yet, we all need to assess our personal faith, the role of our relatives with respect to that faith, and our own relation to the cross as its followers. Mary, mother of God, is the most celebrated relative who is a follower of the cross. She is called mother of God to oppose the false idea related to the teachings of Nestorius, that the divine and human natures in Christ remained somehow separate, as if only the human nature could call Mary mother. Martin Luther rejected the veneration of the saints, but he kept high levels of respect for Mary in his exposition of the Magnificat in Luke chapter 1 and throughout his life. Mary did not plan to become a mother in the way that she did. She was betrothed to Joseph and committed to having a number of his children. Yet the angel Gabriel visited Mary, and we'll celebrate the visitation on the 25th of March, as the church always does, nine months before the 25th of December. And uh, Gabriel gave Mary the overwhelming news. Mary would become the mother of the Son of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. She felt completely overwhelmed, yet she still responded in Luke 1, verse 38, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Luther wrote that if she had not believed, she could not conceive. She saw Mary's faith as one of the greatest miracles in the Bible. 
Mary pondered many things in her heart, including her visit with Elizabeth, the joyful visit of the shepherds, the adoration of the Magi, and the presentation in the temple. Mary's Magnificat is a song of praise as fine as any psalm of David. She may be overwhelmed, yet she has that faithful beauty that reminds us of the Shulamite, the love of Solomon's youth in the Song of Songs. The song also tells us of a faithful bride who is the glory of her husband, dealing with the joys and sorrows of marriage. Just as the song changes its viewpoint from the fresh young bride-to-be to a married woman who endures times of uncertainty, we see a careworn Mary who finds Jesus in the temple, Luke chapter 2, verse 48. We see what some might call a meddlesome Mary at the wedding of Cana, where, despite the words of Jesus himself, that his hour has not come, Mary tells the servants to listen to her son, who can fix the lack of wine for the feast, John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Finally, we see Mary put her foot down with Jesus, coming with his brothers to fetch him and stop this preaching that is getting out of hand, Matthew 12, verse 46. She is worried that her boy will get hurt if things go any further, and she does not want to see that happen. She does what a mother has to do. In all three instances, Jesus points to the importance of his mission as the primary goal. And, of course, that involves his relationship with his heavenly Father. He echoes Elijah before him when he says in Luke chapter 9, verse 62, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. In Luke 11, verses 27 to 28, when a woman calls Mary blessed for bearing and nursing Jesus, he says, Blessed, rather, are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Likewise, in Matthew 12, verses 48 to 50, Jesus says, For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. If blood is thicker than water, then the word of God is the thickest of all. The best of all mothers nurture their children, not only by nursing them and caring for them, but also by leading them to the font of holy baptism, teaching them to pray, to sing, and to read the Bible. Like Mary, when filled with faith, they shine with glory. Katharina von Bora was like so many younger women of noble birth. Marrying her off would uh, have depleted the funds of a small noble house. Like some of her other relatives, she was left in a convent to lead a predictably safe life, more or less out of the way. Yet this intelligent, independent woman was not only a good manager, but also a theologian. The Reformation made sense, and when she and other nuns were smuggled out of her convent in Nimchen and brought to Wittenberg, she wanted to be married to the man at the heart of it all, the confirmed old bachelor himself, the cranky friar called Martin Luther. She only, not only managed to, uh, the household so well that Luther depended on her and called her Master Katie, but she gave him insights about how Christian men and women can live their calling in an honorable way, showing Christ in their everyday lives. Katie Luther was not like Mary in many respects, yet the two women did have some things in common. Both were mothers, both experienced the death of their husbands and at least one of the children. Most importantly, through hardships that each experienced, both had faith that led them to the cross. Mary saw her bleeding, dying son, and she did not say, I told you so. She was there just for him, a loving presence. That is all we can do sometimes. Jesus sees his mother and plans for her future, grafting her into the family of John and giving her a place among the believers. 
that belief would endure. And on Sunday, it would be rewarded with a risen Savior, a son who is alive again. Suddenly, Mary, whose heart had been pierced by the sword of grief, Luke 2, verse 35, would realize joyfully how Jesus made her not just a mother, but a believer, a member of his eternal family. Katie Luther led a hard life. After Martin died, she lived in poverty. She had to flee war and pestilence, which destroyed much of her property and livelihood. After an accident while escaping the plague, she died and was buried in Torgau in 1552. She is not buried anywhere near her husband. On her deathbed, she confessed her unswerving faith in her Lord and Savior. Just as Jesus gave Mary a new son and John had a new mother, so also he makes a church family of his believers through the cross. He remakes our sinful selves to be sons and daughters of his heavenly Father. He has reconciled us to our God. In the same way, Jesus makes it possible for us to be reconciled with each other. His love, his blood, and his righteousness go beyond any blood relations that we might have. As we heard earlier, relatives can bring us to church or they can lead us away from church and aid us in going astray. But God's word will never lead us astray. Christ's love will never betray us. It heals the wounds and division caused by our sin in this world. It gives solutions when the world only creates problems. It starts healing and refreshing uh, us now through its power so that on our deathbed, we too can stick to Christ like a burr sticks to cloth, as Katie Luther was said to have uttered with such a hope, we await the resurrection, just as Mary had done with her son, and just as she does wait the general resurrection, as we all shall right now. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the one true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the versicles on page 286. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you. For you answer me. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with your Holy Spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. For you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I will I sing to my joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart. And I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be the shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. And also to my plea for grace. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways. And bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray together with this morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, 
I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, my souls, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and lead us to everlasting life.